please stand as you're able. So we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess yes, that we are captive to sin and cannot, cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have, done, and and what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call to ordain minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 836, Joyful, Joyful, We Endure Thee. Transformed by grace, we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our readings this morning are from Isaiah, the 35th chapter, and Psalm 146. 
The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of ascending to God's house. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then he tells us that the journey to get there is just as much a joy. The psalmist says, Happy are these, these who help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, who executes justice, gives foods, sets prisoners free, opens eyes, lifts up, watches over, upholds. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, and of deep and everlasting joy, as a sign that we are those who walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and its pure joy. We are ascending to God's promise. First reading comes from Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with singing and with joy and singing. The glory of Le Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is from 146, 5 through 10. Happy are we to have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, 
who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captives free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, and the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Our second lesson comes from James 5, 7 through 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You must also be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See the judge is standing at the doors as an example of suffering and patience. Beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to Jesus, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As John's disciples went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out of the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes run royal palaces. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise, to, praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You'll have to pardon my glasses this morning as your pulpit gets right in my bifocal range. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that, but when I looked down, I saw three lines, and I thought I'd choose the middle one, but I'll wait just a second. It's, it's not easy getting older, is it? No. No. You know, things are just so much different when we were children. In fact, when we were children, the weeks leading up to Christmas were filled with the hopes of all sorts of possibilities. Visions of sugar plums danced in our heads as we impatiently awaited the big day in that bicycle or baby doll or toy from you know who that would fill our hearts with joy and make our lives complete. Sometimes we received that special gift and it gave us great pleasure for a while until we became bored with it or broke it or outgrew it or something new came along. There were also times when we didn't receive the gift we hoped for or worse yet, we received it to discover it wasn't what we expected. And our disappointment often prevented us from appreciating the love and the generosity expressed in the gifts that we did receive. The same is often true when it comes to this season of waiting, this, this season of Advent, and our relationship with and expectations of God. 
In the third chapter of Matthew, John appears in the wilderness proclaiming God's kingdom and the restoration promised by God through the prophets. That that time was coming near and that Israel's waiting was almost over. So John offers the people a baptism of water for repentance, uh, for returning to God, for bearing fruits worthy of repentance of God's kingdom, claiming that this Messiah, this one greater than John, is coming to execute God's judgment, and that this coming one will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, separating the valuable wheat from the worthless chaff, cutting down unfruitful trees, burning away the impurities of Israel with an unquenchable fire. John knows that Jesus is the one and is convinced that Jesus is about to flame up some chaff with Rome's name on it and free God's people. John's confidence and boldness in preparing the way for Jesus' ministry eventually lands John in prison for confronting King Herod and calling the king to repentance for marrying his brother's wife. In today's gospel, as John sits in prison, he hears what Jesus and his disciples are up to. And it's far from what John expected. Jesus' understanding of the law appears to be much different than John's. Jesus and his disciples do far more feasting than fasting. And rather than denouncing sin and warning of the coming judgment, Jesus appears far more concerned with healing and mercy and serving the poor and vulnerable and welcoming and sharing table, share, table, share, table fellowship with the lost and excluded, you know, those tax collectors and, and sinners. From John's perspective, something is seriously wrong. If the kingdom of God has come near in Jesus, if God is indeed restoring God's people, why is John in prison? Why aren't things getting better? Why do Herod and Rome and hostility and rejection seem to be having their way? Confused and a bit less certain than he was when he baptized Jesus and heard that voice say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. John sends his disciples to Jesus to see if he really is the one whom John and the nation is waiting for. Instead, of answering John's questions, Jesus instructs John's disciples to go and tell John what they see and hear. And then Jesus describes the fruits of his ministry, a ministry that embodies and fulfills the hope described in this morning's first lesson, where God, through the prophet Isaiah, speaks a word of hope and promise to an exiled people who have lost their homes and their land and their temple and fear that God has abandoned them. But God promises that things are not as they appear. For as we heard in today's psalm, unlike human leaders whose plans eventually perish, God's reign of justice and righteousness and steadfast love is forever. God has not forgotten them. Their sorrow will one day end. A day is coming when the God who faithfully freed their ancestors from slavery in Egypt and led them through the wilderness to the promised land will prepare another road, a highway, a safe and holy way in the desert and once again bring them home. On that day, all of creation, all of humanity will be made new and whole and celebrate God's reign. The wilderness will blossom with life. The dry ground will spring up with water. The eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame will walk like a deer. The tongue of the speechless will sing for joy. Until that day, God's people are to patiently and to expectantly live in God's promise by preparing the way, strengthening those hands that are weak and those knees that are feeble, and encouraging those who are frightened to be strong because God is with them and faithful, and God will save them. Jesus reminds John of that same hope and assurance 
and encourages John to be patient and to reimagine the power and the presence of God's saving activity. Because although Jesus' ministry may not be the unquenchable fire John anticipates, John is correct. The kingdom of God has come near. For God is present and at work in Jesus. Not to save God's people from Rome or even to save John from prison, but to destroy the power of sin and death and breathe new life into all of creation and into all people. And the highway, this holy way through the wilderness of sin and darkness and those things that presently keep us from living freely and fully with God will be a road to Jerusalem where God's grace will prevail over God's judgment. And Jesus' power and majesty and glory and mercy will ultimately be revealed with his winnowing fork, a cross, where Jesus will take all that separates us from God upon himself. You know, it's ironic that some of my greatest joys and fondest memories of Christmas come from gifts I didn't ask for or expect and often didn't appreciate at the time because I was so focused on what I wanted and didn't get. I, I was thinking too small. While John's expectations of the Messiah were a bit too vengeful to see what God was doing, John was confident that God would act and act mightily. Truth is, brothers and sisters, is, is that our expectations of Jesus are often too small to grasp what God is up to and what God desires from us and for us. What we want and expect from the coming of Jesus is our best life now, a life of, of comfort and security and good health and loving families and full pews and lives with no conflicts or problems. And when things don't go as we expect, or they go as we expect, and our lives somehow still feel empty, we can become disappointed and impatient and uncertain of God's presence and power and faithfulness and our hands become weak and idle, and our knees become feeble, and we go nowhere. Our hearts become imprisoned with fear and doubt, and we grumble and turn in on ourselves and away from God, forgetting who and whose we are in our baptism into Christ, or, or expecting it to make no difference. And we miss out on the presence and power and joy of God and all that God is up to in our lives as a community of faith. But as we gather around God's holy word and honor and praise God with our worship and our prayers and our songs, God through the Holy Spirit opens our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds and helps us reimagine the depth and breadth of God's presence and power and the inclusiveness of God's steadfast love. And then in water and word and bread and wine, Jesus promises to be present, offering us his very body and blood, forgiving us, changing us, increasing our faith, renewing our hope, expanding our vision of what is possible. So that with hands and actions strong and knees firm, and our direction sure, we may patiently live in the promise of God's saving power now, showing mercy to the poor, welcoming the forgotten, offering comfort and hope to the hopeless, proclaiming and embodying not merely the hopes of survival or even getting everything we want, but rather the reality of the sure and certain hope of God's kingdom and the one gift need, the perfect love of the one who came among us on that first Christmas, who is coming again and is with us now, Jesus. He is our hope, and it's a hope 
for which we say thanks be to God and amen. Please stand as you are able. Our hymn of the day is number six or 264, Prepare the Royal Highway. Gracious God, we receive in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and ELCA Global Missions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands that have squandered and depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss, especially Beverly and Glenn, Anne and John, Ruby and Cliff, Wayne, Stella, Floyd, Judy, Sunday, Peggy, Rachel, Sarah and Danny, Gail and Hoover, Monica, and all those who we now name in the silence of our hearts. Strength strengthen and protect healthcare workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. We especially pray for the family of Florence Lohman. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints, that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's now share that piece using American Sign Language.
Please stand as you're able. And let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. It's indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you'll also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look for hope for his coming. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with the light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, come Holy spirit. spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready.
Again, if you please stand as you're able. God, the eternal word who dwells in us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you've remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, God, the eternal word who dwells among us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 267, Joy to the World. As we prepare to depart today and enjoy our soup and sandwiches, let us remember our mission, which is to grow in faith by seeking the will of God and sharing his love with all people. Now go in peace, for Christ is near. Thanks be to God.